All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're looking at the latest update. This is gonna be bringing a couple of documented UI changes, but a pretty sweet undocumented UI change. Let's jump right into it. All right, so we're talking 2020.16.2.1, the latest update. Again, this is primarily gonna be UI based, user interface based for Tesla. Uh, and they're doing a little bit of UI cleanup here. So what they have here first and foremost is the Tesla toy box allowing the screen to be redesigned. So what used to happen before is you would press this icon here to bring down the menu and the tray would come down to show you the toys, or you could press the icon here and it'll bring up the toy box, okay? And you would just press it and it would go right into that particular uh, application. But now they're gonna try to align the UI to be more consistent with the video game interface. We'll touch on that in just a second. The other thing they're doing is they're updating the charging UI for when you select chargers. When you click the icon on the map for charging, instead of bringing up a full list, starting with superchargers closest and then destination chargers, it allows you to filter by the speed in which you'd like to charge. So obviously uh, one, you can consider it as level one or level two uh, destination chargers. Then you have slightly faster chargers with two lightning bolts, which represent more of the urban superchargers, not quite as fast as the high-end superchargers but much faster than the level one or level two chargers. And then you have uh, obviously the superchargers there as well. So lots of good updates there in terms of the user interface. Uh, obviously they also include some dash cam improvements to be able to quickly and easily format your USB drive. Uh, if you have a brand new one, instead of using a computer or putting it into a computer to format it, you can plug it right into the car and then you can update that. I can take a look at that right now and show you what that looks like. You go here, safety and security. And then what happens is once you put your USB in, if it's brand new, that you'll be able to format the USB device to make it compatible with the Tesla cam, just making it that much easier for it to work. All right, and then they also have some backgammon improvements. I don't really play backgammon, so I can't really speak on the level of difficulty, but they say they improved the difficulty there. All right, so let's jump right into it first, looking at the toy box. Clicking on here brings the toy box menu up, and as I said before, they're gonna unify the UI, make it more consistent. And now what you have here is a list of all the apps, all the sort of Easter eggs or toy box uh, game or toys or surprises that they have in the car. And you have them in an app form. So now instead of just clicking on them and them launching the actual application, you click on it and you get the options of it, right? You get the options and then you can actually start to kick off the application as needed for tracks, uh, for romance mode. It gives you the description as well. So again, this is just bringing this common user interface uh, for its internal apps, its Easter egg apps, just to make it more consistent with the other games that they have here. Again, looking at games, if you go to entertainment, you go to arcade, you get that similar feature. See that? All the different games are here. You can click on it. You give a description of what it is. So it gives you some context and allows you to play it. Same concept with the toy box. Now you touch on anything. It gives you a description, a little preview, and now you can play it. So this is really cool because this is showing that Tesla is opening up the doors potentially for obviously more apps of its own, but potentially for more third-party apps to bring in. And now you have sort of an app store interface, if you will, where you can click on something, see the details, maybe even buy it at some point, say purchase this particular app, and then you can launch it from here. So it's a pretty consistent UI uh, in that regard. So definitely kudos to Tesla for making that update. All right, the next thing they did was they made some updates to the charging UI. Let's take a look at that. Here's the charging UI as it stands now and what they have here now, the filters. Filters by the speed in which you'd like to charge. Uh, by default, some of them could be on, some of them could be off. If they are dark like this, that means they are active, meaning you're filtering by that, that particular type. And right now we're, we're filtering by all of them. So it's gonna show us based on distance, the closest ones to us and shows you the max kilowatt for that particular charger. So if I take off level three or the superchargers, if you will, uh, it's gonna show you some of the lower speed superchargers or urban chargers, if you will. Uh, if I take that off, it's gonna show me some, some of the level one, level two chargers, destination chargers as Tesla calls them around the, around the map. So that's pretty cool. Helps you to be able to search specifically what you want to. And it also saves this and persists this. So if I was to take this off, take this on, take this off and just focus on high-end superchargers. Next time I search for chargers, it'll only show me the high-end superchargers. It won't show me any slower superchargers or urban chargers, and it won't show me any of the destination chargers as well. So that's pretty cool to be able to, to filter by that. Otherwise, you'd have to just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling until you get to the charger of your, of your choice. So that's also good. Or you can zoom in and zoom out the map as well. So that's pretty much it. 
Now let's jump on the road and show you the undocumented uh, update to the UI that they've made, which revolves around the instrument cluster and the visualization. Here we go, a little something. See if we can get him to go. Pick him up a little bit. There we go. So he's facing that way. So that's a little Easter egg there. That's a little undocumented uh, change to this update is that we now show pedestrians animated and facing in the appropriate direction, really signifying the fact that the car can see pedestrians really well and also articulate them and animate them and show them the way that they should be shown and visualized. So it's gonna give us lots of confidence that the car knows what it's doing, can see everything, and that's awesome. Let's see if we can get this guy running up here. He's running up here, you can see that. Awesome. So for all, all instances uh, of pedestrians facing forward, facing backwards, relative to the cameras, left and right, all animated as they walk or run in this instance across, it's gonna just represent as run as, uh, as walking. But uh, it works nonetheless. So pretty cool feature, pretty cool update. Definitely like it. But love to see them improve, start to show smaller people, kids versus adults articulate that going forward obviously people are people but being able to distinguish the, the them from one another is also valuable as well so what you see there is that primarily it's looking for the narrow front facing camera instead of the wide would love it to use the wide angle camera but it's using the narrow camera so pedestrians uh, too far left or too far right off center of that camera are not going to get picked up. Cyclists are still displayed as cyclists. They are able to be shown facing forward and facing to the side as well, but they're still cyclists nonetheless. The, the, the graphics haven't really changed too much there. See if we can't catch these people here. Take a look at that. Take a look at that animation. Look at that. Awesome. People are animated in the direction that they're moving in. Awesome. Again, they have to be close to the car and within field of view of the narrow front facing camera, not the wide. Pretty challenging in these times to get pedestrians actually walking around. So I figured I'd go to a grocery store, which might yield some better results of people walking from place to place. Here we go with this gentleman. Look at that. Nice and animated. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty cool updates, documented, but also a pretty sweet update in the undocumented visualization uh, to be able to show the pedestrians, show people in different directions, animated as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about the latest update. Did you get it? Did you not get it? What are your thoughts on it? Do you find any usefulness with the charging uh, filters or do you find it better to navigate with the new UI for the Tesla toy box? 
Let's talk about it in the comments. Until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your day, and enjoy your Tesla.